Welcome to the Navigating Your Life show. I'm your host, Nat Williams. Tonight, we're going to dive into the topic of families and different ways on how you can successfully put your family first. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit with Patty Noss from It Takes a Village in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and here's what happened. So, Patty, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about your organization, which is called It Takes a Village. That's correct. Wonderful. So, tell us a little bit about what your organization does. What, what we're doing in partnering with several counties in Pennsylvania is really hoping to uh, help uh, unveil the vision of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court mm -hmm. uh, and the Department of Public Welfare in their belief that there truly needs to be a shift in practice in how do we interact with families and children that we serve. And uh, what we're doing is implementing as, as part of that core something called family group conferencing. Mm -hmm. And family group conferencing truly is an opportunity for families to come together who have found their way into systems such as child welfare, juvenile probation, even the schools mm -hmm. when we're experiencing wow. issues. So, Pat, let me just hold you there for some of our viewers who may not be aware that um, for kids in the juvenile justice system or the child welfare system, the court system has a responsibility to hear their cases every so often mm -hmm. and to monitor them. And then the Department of Public Welfare is responsible for monitoring their care and really making sure that those facilities that they're in are licensed and they're doing what they're supposed to do. So those two groups have came together and to say that we have to give those families a stronger voice in what's happening. And so when you talk about um, the, those two systems uh, collaborating, uh, that's the role that they have. One that takes care of the judicial issues uh, and the other one that takes care of the care and the monitoring of care. So Patty, please continue. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's exactly right. And I, I think that that in itself is huge. Mm -hmm. It sort of mirrors the whole practice and philosophy of family group conferencing, that we are collaborating as a team. Wow. Um, we're consultants rather than bosses because what we do know is that the families truly do have the answers. Mm. In family group conferencing, we really define family very loosely. It may or may not be biologically mm. uh, inclined. Sure. It certainly is anyone who cares mm. about that individual mm. who's, who's struggling or the family as a unit. And I think if, if you know, our viewers take the time to look at, we have an adoption highlight in our show each week. And uh, one of the things that I've been watching is how the age has etched up. And so we have kids that are 15 and 16 and 17 that are still looking to be adopted. Yeah. And that goes back to your point about permanency. For some of these individuals, permanency is still an issue and they're, and that they haven't been able to attain and, it's, and they're 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. And that, that has a cost to society and whatever we, we can do to try to give them a forever family at mm. some point uh, in, a t in their teenage years is, a, is something we really want to try to do. That's, that's absolutely right. And what we're, we're certainly looking at is, is front-loading you know, the front end of the sure, system sure. and to really engage, meaningfully engage mm -hmm. our families as they're coming in the door and, and looking at what are our resources at the front end and mm -hmm. what can we do so that this child does not have to experience all these different mm -hmm. uh, uh, places to live and, and never really truly find the permanency. Yeah. But, uh, but I think on top of, of that, what's important is that this, this whole premise of family group conferencing uh, it truly is not a program. It's not something that you would say, okay, company A, go head out and do this. Mm -hmm. it, it is truly a, a, a shift in practice and counties having to take a look at how do they operate, sure. how do they do business, what kind of mm -hmm. customer service sure. are we looking at. And, uh, and, and with that, um, oftentimes comes a family group conferencing mm -hmm. uh, aspect, mm -hmm. which is a true planning modality. Sure. And Patty, wouldn't you say the real premise between, uh, under, excuse me, that underlies um, the concept is the family is valued and their input is valued. And so often when there's abuse or a crime, that the family sometimes, if not all the time, is, is blamed. And what this model attempts to do is to say, let's put that family first. This is their child this is their issue, and let's work with them. And, and that's exactly it. And unlike many other planning modalities, there's a component in family mm -hmm. group conferencing that's called private family time, mm -hmm. where there are no professionals wow. in the room. Wow. That really um, kind of cements the idea that the family's truly with the right preparation. And preparation is key in this model. Sure. Safety is key in this mm -hmm. model. Um, but to that end, what we do know is that when families have those natural support systems mm -hmm. that gather around them when there's a decision to be made, they make good decisions. Mm -hmm. We know two and a half years after a conference, 
um, via our research that 83 percent of the plans that were developed in the children and youth system, and, and this is specific to Dolphin County, but mm -hmm. it would be comparable sure. here in Lehigh, um, that those plans are still being followed, that the purpose is still being achieved. That, that's highly unusual in the child wel welfare sure. system. But you can take those statistics and almost go across all of the categorical systems, like adult probation, mm -hmm. like juvenile probation, sure. and you're still seeing the same results, which suggests that this is a philosophical shift mm -hmm. and that this is a strong planning modality, and mm -hmm. together there's good outcomes for That's our wonderful. families. Yeah. As we get ready to wrap up, Patty, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers about um, the knowledge you've gained as you've put families first? I would suggest that um, we, we need to keep remembering that the system leaves and, and ultimately mm -hmm. the family needs to be supported when the system does leave. And that's why everyone who's viewing this today really needs to believe that they do have part of the solution. Mm -hmm. We need everybody in the community to be a part of this whole initiative. This is a county driven practice. Mm -hmm. And whether it be uh, because your church is able to offer a place for families to have conferences, mm -hmm. because we have them in neutral settings, or whether it be you want to mentor in some kind of way. There, there's a place for everybody in this practice. That's wonderful. Yeah. Very good. Well, Patty, thank you so much for coming in, and I wish you continued pleasure. success. Thank you. Very good. We want to thank Patty and her staff for sharing their story with us. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll talk with a representative from Senior Solutions, as well as Billy Weiss, a parent who has made sacrifices to put her children first. Please stay with us. Ready for some fun? FunWorks assists individuals with and without disabilities to participate in community activities. These activities are provided in small settings for one to eight individuals with at least one to two direct support professionals. We visit places like Dollywood, Willow Valley Inn, Phillies Games, Iron Pigs Games, the Lehigh Valley Zoo, and more. Let us know your dream trip. Our staff is dedicated to ensuring your dream activities come true. For more information, call 888-966-9466 or visit funworksinc.org. It's about changing the world in which we live. It's about playing, living, and working together. It's about escaping from special programs. It's about finding leadership. And social justice. The Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council believes that disability is a natural part of the human condition. We are working to create a commonwealth where all people thrive in shared citizenship. And everybody wins. Leonard, age 17, enjoys playing football and all forms of athletic activities. He is very conscious of maintaining his fitness to participate in sports. Leonard attends regular high school classes and he needs positive reinforcement to continue working toward his academic and social goals. Leonard needs a loving, structured family that will assist him with developing his academic and emotional potential. He is very close to his brothers and it is important that he remain in touch with them. For adoption information, please access the National Adoption Center's website at adopt.org. For further specific information on Leonard, please contact Allen at adopt.org. Well, welcome back to the Navigating Your Life show. I'd like to welcome to the studio today uh, Darla Hively from Senior Solutions, as well as Billy Weiss. So welcome, Darla. Nice to meet you. And welcome, Billy. Thank you. Good. So, uh, Darla, would you please explain to us what uh, Senior Solutions is all about? Yes. Uh, Senior Solutions is a geriatric care management agency. Mm -hmm. A geriatric care manager is a professional that you come to to be your advisor, advocate, and guide mm -hmm. for seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, people come to us to help them develop a plan of care, either for themselves or a family member, a spouse, or a loved one. Mm -hmm because aging is not always easy in sure. our society sure. and we've never done this before people have never lived to be the ages that they're reaching before and they're doing so with not always as much uh, good health mm. as they had in earlier ages and so we help people navigate develop a plan um, help them in implement that plan uh, educate them as to the resources that are available in mm. the community we can also help monitor of seniors in any environment that they live in. Wow. Because even though we like to put families first, mm -hmm. uh, we can't always physically be there to do that. So, you, so your company is a, is a way for people to make sure that they're not forgetting about their responsibility to their older members of their family and to make sure that they're covered 
by the supports and services you offer. Correct. Wow, very good. And so, Billy, I understand you've uh, put your family for first, but in a different kind of way. Would you share with us how you did that? Yes. Um, well, I've done many different things. I am a local community member, a parent. Mm -hmm. I've been involved in the PTA for, um, you know, 10, 12 years. And I was a career woman. Mm -hmm. I actually went out and, you know, got my career set and worked for a lot of big companies. And then... My, I traveled all the time. I was never home with my family. My husband was raising the kids, basically. And then I said, I want to be home. Wow. So I got a job at the local college here, and now I'm home in the summers. So I kind of did it in reverse. Mm. I, I took the opposite. I, stayed, I was away with, when my kids were younger, and now I'm home with my kids more. Wow. And, you know, it's a, big, it's a big responsibility to be a working mm. parent. So this way... Um, the kids have to call me all the time. I'm five minutes from my home in case there's an emergency. And we kind of keep the lines of communication open. Wow. So. And what have you seen, I'm going to ask this question to both of you, what are you seeing that people have to do to put in order so that they can put their family first? So if you want to you know, make sure that you're, making, you're covering the base, uh, bases for the older person in your family, what are some of the things that you've seen that people have to do just to organize themselves so that they can put their family first? And then I'm going to ask that question to, to Billy as well. Well, I think the first thing they need to do is educate themselves mm -hmm. on uh, the resources out there. The second thing is to really assess the situation of what the seniors' needs are, mm -hmm. what their preferences are, what their strengths are, mm -hmm. and uh, build upon those. And there are many ways to do this. You can um, do some research yourself. Mm -hmm. You can call upon the services of a person like me, a geriatric mm -hmm. care manager. And we are professionals from backgrounds such as social work mm -hmm. and nursing mm -hmm. who have added experience working as care managers. We're certified. We've done this for many years. And we can often make this process easier so it's mm -hmm. not just a hit or miss process mm -hmm. for you. And I think one of the things you bring up that's so important is that in order for this to work, you have to make it about the person, not about you. So by putting your family first, you'd make it about your family and because they're happy and have their needs met, that's gonna have a residual effect to you uh, as well. But so often we have it lopsided. We try to do everything that meets our needs and then the persons that we're trying to, to love and support are actually miserable um, because we've done it based on our schedule. And one of the things that, uh, especially when it comes to seniors, and I think an organization like yours would be a great help, is that I have an aunt who's uh, just come to stay with us for a period of time as she's recuperating, and we've gone out to the store. And, you know, she uses a wheelchair sometimes, and it's amazing how the people in society will talk to you rather than to them. And, you know, just a simple way of putting your family first is to say, well, that question, she can answer it, so why don't you direct it? And we went to a restaurant, and they asked us a question whether or not she was going to stay in the chair or not. And I'm like, well, why don't you ask her what she wants to do? So it's the little things that you can do in your behavior, but it's also some of the larger things you can do as well. I, I'm sure you would agree. Absolutely. Yeah. And putting your family first. Also, some people make the mistake of giving, giving all they have to give, uh, all their energy, mm -hmm. all their time. But sometimes putting your family first means serving yourself first and taking care of yourself so that you can be there to mm -hmm. care for them and assist mm -hmm. them. Wow. Um, it's like when the oxygen comes down on the airplane mm -hmm. and they sure. tell you to put the mask on yourself sure. first so that you can help others. Wow. Um, that's what we often advocate people to do. Mm -hmm. um, take breaks mm -hmm. in caregiving. Um, make sure that there's respite for you if you're mm -hmm. a caregiver or whoever the caregiver is. Good. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think the same rules apply to adolescents mm -hmm. and teenagers. You have to educate them on what's important and what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. What, like, my kids have to come home every day no matter what, and they have to call me when they get home. Mm -hmm. That's a rule. I have to know that you're home safe, whether dad's home or, you know, Grammy's there, whatever. I want to know that you're home safe. Mm -hmm. So educate them and keep them structured the same way. Let them speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. If I go take my kids to the dentist and the dentist asks, me a qu or <laughs> asks them a question, you have to sometimes back off mm -hmm. and not speak for them. Let them speak. Mm -hmm. Let them have a chance. Wow. It's, just, it's the exact same thing. It's just in a different time frame. And, and uh, Billy, I think you bring up a very good point that when you decided to do something, it's amazing how things began to fall into place. Uh -huh. Who would have thought about this job that you got that's so close to home? 
But sometimes when you just put it out there and you just and it's a good and a positive thing, it begins to fall into to, to line mm -hmm. uh, better than you thought. Would you agree in your situation that it just the stars just align themselves to you, make it? You are so absolutely correct, and you really there's a lot of kids that like to hang out at parents houses when they're not home mm -hmm. and it's so funny my son will say well we can't come to my house until my mom gets home so <laughs> he'll know three to five i mean and he's older now he's 17 mm -hmm. so but three to five nobody's at the house mm -hmm. as soon as i get home everyone's at the house wow. and it, it's nice to see how the kids engage they'd rather be at somebody's house where there's a parent home mm -hmm. you just have to set the rules mm -hmm. tell them educate them on what, what consequences are, mm -hmm. and they would rather be there with wow. the adults. And what was it for you um, that did you wake up one day, uh, Billy, and say, you know what, you know, I'm not living like this any longer? What was, was there a moment that happened for you that said things have to change? Yeah, I got called to be on the road, and I got back, and I had to go again, and um, we had an emergency at the house, and my son had to get stitches, and I wasn't there, and I was getting phone calls on what was going on, and I just said to myself, this is enough. I need to be here. Yeah. I need to be here. The kids are going to be home in the summertime. They're at daycare. Yeah. And I need to be a constant in their life. Wow. And my husband's so wonderful, too. And he's very supportive. Yeah. And he's with the kids all the time um, as well when he gets home. But yeah. it was very important, especially during the summers. Yeah. I thought we had a pool. I didn't want kids hanging at the house when there's um, no one home. Yeah. Sure. And I just thought I need to be there. Wow. I need to be available to them. Wonderful. We're getting ready to wrap up, but I want to give you a chance to share any closing thoughts you have. So we'll go with you and uh, you can share any thoughts you have. Well, I would just like to encourage everyone to um, carefully identify the situation, what their needs are, mm -hmm. um, reach out for help mm -hmm. if needed, um, and take care of the caregiver <laughs> when Very they're good. dealing with families. Because right. if, you, if you're if you not well rested or if you're unhealthy, then you won't have um, anything to share with those who need your help. Wonderful. So. And Billy, please. And my last statement would be not to, to be careful about judgment. You don't want to judge the person or the adolescent or the teenager. Mm -hmm. You want to judge the behavior. Mm -hmm. So if something does happen, um, or if there's a situation where they do break a rule, mm -hmm. educate them, talk to them about the consequences that, that breaking that rule could have, mm -hmm. and you know, just don't put it on them. Mm -hmm. It happens to a lot of kids. Sure. So just be careful about the judgment. Good. And I, I think your point is well taken, that as you realign your priorities, you know, be reasonable and, and allow for some room for people to come into who they are and uh, uh, what their role is going to be. And, and at the same time, you, you know, you've made this goal for you. You know, don't alienate everyone along the way. And so I think that's a point so, that's so well taken. So I want to thank you, uh, Dollar well, thank and you. Billy, for being with thank us today. Uh, it was a really a great segment, so I thank you for, for joining us. We're now going to take a brief commercial break, and when we come back, we'll be out of studio with some guests from Lehigh Valley Hospital, so please stay with us. Enrich your life at Sacred Heart Villa, situated atop Mount St. Michael on 40-plus scenic acres. Our caring staff includes missionary sisters and on-site licensed nurses 24-7. We offer medical reminders as well as dispensing medication and transportation to medical appointments. With excellent food, fun events, a spacious hall, safe rooms, and much more, your life will be enriched. Call 610-929-5751 or go to sacredheartvilla-readingpa.org. Explore Dr. Nat Williams' Absolutes of Success book series featuring The Navigator of Life, The Mature 64, Living Life 8x8, Management and Leadership by the Three Ps, The Affordability Factor, The Four Cs of Change, Embracing Your Real Life, and the Absolutes of Success series workbook, Maximizing Your Greatest Potential to Achieve Your Personal Best. All books available at drnatwilliams.com or amazon.com. In these challenging times, your organization needs employees that maximize results. Human Works Training and Educational Services provides results-focused seminars for your staff. Topics include management and motivating employees, stress management, team building and leadership skills, and cultural diversity. Register today, just $89.99 or $75 for chamber members. Call 484-893-5057 or visit hwtes.com. So we're back and we're joined today by Michelle Motzko and Jack uh, Girassi from Lehigh Valley Health Network. Mm -hmm. And so welcome to the show. Thank you Michelle. very much. And welcome Jack. Thank you. Good. So we're talking today about putting families first. So please mm -hmm. tell us how the Lehigh Valley Health, Health Network 
uh, works to do that. So Michelle, please start. Thank you. Um, my focus is the emergency room case manager. I really like to focus in on those patients that are coming into the emergency room. Um, many of the patients that we see are coming in under um, a crisis situation. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of times families are coming in, they don't know what to do with their loved one, so they bring them to the emergency room. And one example I'd like to share with you is we had a patient that came in and was um, previously at a skilled nursing facility and her son decided to take her out of the nursing home to provide, try to provide uh, good quality care to mm -hmm. her at home and found it really wasn't working out at home. Um, he had services in place but it just it wasn't working out. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know what to do, brought his mom into the emergency room and realized again she you know, wasn't making it at home. So I immediately intervened and made some referrals and was able to safely have her transferred right from the emergency room wow. to a skilled nursing home. Wow. And as the chaplain? Uh, well, uh, as chaplains, we're often consulted to see families and patients just as this one. So this mm -hmm. son, who was under a lot of duress, mm -hmm. trying to care for his mother and meeting those obligations, mm -hmm. um, carry a lot of spiritual pain and sure. yeah. moral obligations. Sure. And so chaplains often are really helpful in helping people process that, that journey of what's best for them and their mother, uh, loved one, mm -hmm. what's... Um, uh, what's the dynamics in a family sure. often we can help uncover that mm -hmm. because sometimes families are trying to reach the best goal for the, for the, their loved one mm -hmm. but are struggling mm -hmm. with a lot of inner sure. inner dynamics that uh, influence mm -hmm. their decisions so you're, you're trying to come in there and provide some relief and be an intermediary but that's get right. in that's right and do what you need to do and then get back out that's right so it, it doesn't appear to me but maybe I'm wrong that every health network is doing this why would Lehigh Valley want to involve right. themselves in these kind of activities which put families first when some other institutions uh, that are providing health care or mm -hmm. other services are not. Why would you want to be concerned with this? What is it saving? Well, education is key because if we don't help educate our patients and the families, they're going to continually return to the emergency room mm -hmm. when we can actually provide you know, awesome resources that are available to them. Right. Very good. I think if we help families discern what's the best goal of care for right. their loved one, the, the stay, hospital stay is decreased, mm -hmm. so financially things are improved. Mm -hmm. um, I think the overall health care is, is improved if families and, fami if families and patients are on the same, mm -hmm. uh, same page. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. so, and so I think we do that well to treat the, always the patient and the family as one unit. Wow. And you'd mentioned um, before we got started about a program at the hospital called OASIS. Could you tell us a little about that? Yes, yeah, it's called OASIS, which is a, an acronym for a group of uh, physicians and nurse practitioners that help to um, come in on, on complex cases mm -hmm. and assess patients' goals. What, what does the patient want mm -hmm. and what does the family want and are they in concert? And how could we help them be in concert if there is, if there's some uh, difficulties in those dynamics? Um, so Oasis, I mean, I've sat with physicians who uh, have been with families for an hour or more with an entire family system trying to discern what's best for this patient, trying to explain to the family what's the overall case here and try to be realistic with the family so that they could make good decisions that they sure. can live with. Sure. Um, as we get ready to, to wrap up, Michelle and Jack, is there anything else that as um, people are dealing with institutions um, that you want them to put families uh, first, what are some things that they want to keep in mind to look for? Well, um, when I had my aunt in a facility, we actually went in to visit several nursing facilities and, you know, went in unannounced and we tried to get a good feel, um, you know, how are the patients being treated and um, what type of rehabilitation services do they have and are they including the patient and the family in the care conference and really being open to visiting 24 hours and I was my aunt's advocate and, um, you know. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. I'm going to go to the emergency room you know, mm -hmm. pretty soon. I'm just going to walk around and say, what are you doing here? I'm just here checking things out because mm -hmm. Michelle told me I should check mm -hmm. them out and, and see what they say. But I think your point is well taken is that you may want to go there just to make sure everything is okay mm -hmm. and, and look at the whole span of time. You sure. know, don't go there just in the evening or just in the morning, but look at the weekends and look at late nights and that's, mm -hmm. that's a really wonderful. Jack, what else would you say if a person's looking to make sure a place is putting families yeah. first, what would they look for? I, I think you want to look for people who are listening. So you want to find advocates yeah. for yourself. Uh, could be a case manager. Mm -hmm. Is there a nurse mm -hmm. or a physician that, that you're comfortable with that you feel is listening to you mm -hmm. and you're getting results from them? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I think advocacy, do you have an advocate in the system, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a chaplain or a sure. case manager or a nurse? Does someone have your back? That's right. Wonderful. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for what you do, mm -hmm. and thank, thank you so you much for, for joining us, us today. Thank you. It really nice means a lot. Here. So thank, thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. And thank you so much, Dan. You're welcome. Sure. Uh, now we're going to take a break. and we come back, we'll wrap up today's show. At Bridge to Creative Learning and Child Care Center, your child will learn and play the creative way in a safe and secure environment. We offer a fun and caring educational-based atmosphere and allow parents to monitor their child's activities. We are a state-licensed child care center offering academic preparation, after-school programs, creative learning, summer activities, and much more. Call us at 610-351-7400. Prepare your child for a brighter future. You choose your doctor. You choose your pharmacy. Why shouldn't you choose your in-home health care provider? The good news is you can and you should. When your hospital or doctor prescribes home care, Alan Lear Home Care Associates will work with you in the comfort of your own home, providing a full range of services. Our nurses are dedicated professionals that take the time to get to know you and help you return to your optimal health. Call Alan Lear Home Care Associates. Caring for you when you need us most. Thank you for watching today's show. I hope it's been enlightening, encouraging, and empowering for you. So many of us struggle with having not enough hours in the day. Whether we are single parents, have more than one job, or just work long hours, we all try our best at putting our families first. However, as many of us feel, we probably could do a better job. Hopefully this show has educated you on ways to put your family first, and our stories have inspired change. As we wrap up today's show, we want to let you know we're looking forward to having you join us next week when we will be discussing reinventing your life. Till then, be well. Thanks for watching. A list of resources related to today's show is available on our website, which is navigatingyourlifeshow.com. On this site, there is a connection to our Facebook and Twitter pages and to our blog. While you are there, you can also email your comments on today's show or share ideas for future shows.